Assistant for the Office of Administrative Services at the District of Columbia Housing Authority. And I'd like to welcome all of you um, to the District of Columbia Housing Authority's Vendor Contracting Opportunities Expo. Uh, before we get started, just want to give a little bit of housekeeping requests and rules, please. If I could ask everyone to please check their device and make sure it's muted before we start. Um, everyone has intentions and good intentions of making sure they don't say anything. But if you could please just check your device, make sure it's muted. If you're not familiar with WebEx, um, at the bottom of the screen is where you can be able to mute your screen, stop your video, um, as well as far as, again, with questions. The intention is, again, we're going to have question and answer sessions. If, in fact, you do have a question, feel free to please look in the area where it gives you opportunity to chat to everyone. You would just you could just type the word question or you can type out your question, whatever your preference is. So that when we get to the opportunity for question and answers, we can recognize you in order. If not, then again, once we open it up, you can be able to ask your question. Um, right next to that um, is also a little emblem with a smiley face. You can be able to send reactions at any time during a presentation, um, as opposed to, again, speaking and congratulating or clapping. You can be able to do all of that um, with the actual little emoji at the bottom. So we'd ask if you'd be able to do that and recognize that as far as the program is concerned, since this is our first virtual presentation with regard to providing vendor opportunities. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our executive director, Mr. Tyrone Garrett, as well as the chair of our DC Board of Commissioners, Mr. Neil Albert. Hi. Thank you, Lori. Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you all here. I'm actually gonna allow Chairman Albert um, to speak on behalf of the Board of Commissioners and welcome everyone um, first, and then I'll follow up um, with my welcome to, to each and every one of you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Garrett, and thank you, Lori. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Neil Albert. I am the chair of the Board of Commissioners of the DC Housing Authority. We are an 11 member board uh, that's responsible for uh, po policy and direction uh, for this organization. And I'm very pleased uh, to be asked to join you uh, today. Under the leadership of our executive director, Tyron Garrett, uh, DC Housing Authority has become a much more transparent organization and has made many more opportunities available uh, for local businesses. Last year, the Board of Commissioners uh, approved a resolution that will designate a certain amount of the spend uh, from DCHA to local small minority women-owned businesses. And again, I, I want to say thanks to our executive director and his team, particularly Laurie Bonds, uh, for making that possible. Today, we want to share with you uh, a number of the opportunities that are available uh, through DCHA. I know many of us, uh, many of you might think we are another government agency, and we are, but we are a quasi government agency. And so we have different rules and regulations from the District of Columbia government. We have different funding and procurement opportunities from the District of Columbia government. Under the leadership of Tyrone Garrett, uh, we've been able to raise uh, over $60 million last year and hopefully this year and the years to come uh, to spend on refreshing our inventory of public housing. And so there alone, there are a number of opportunities available for our local construction and other businesses. DCHA spends hundreds of millions of dollars every year in procurement. We want to make sure that you get a slice of that pie. And that's why we're spending some time today sharing with you the opportunities that are available in DCHA. So in closing, I want to say, please take advantage uh, of the opportunities uh, today and moving forward. And again, I want to congratulate Lori Bonds and Tyrone Garrett for having the foresight uh, to put together this expo even uh, in the middle of a pandemic. So. With, with that said, I want to turn it over to our executive director, Mr. Garrett. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Neil, I uh, really appreciate that. And to the staff that has been able to put this together, um, even in the midst of the pandemic, I, I applaud each and every one of my team, um, members of my team for doing this. Um, it's something that we've wanted to do for some time. Uh, and the reason we wanted to do this, ladies and gentlemen, is because 
it's important to to not only the DCHA, but also to the community as a whole. Um, DCHA has a different mission. Our mission not only is to provide um, safe, decent, and affordable housing um, for the low um, to, to middle class individuals that we actually serve today, but it's also to make sure that there are opportunities for our community, members of our community, our residents, um, and local um, contractors and business owners um, to have an opportunity to flourish. Because at the end of the day, it is you who we are actually trying to serve on a daily basis. So I commend each and every one of you for participating today. Um, in addition, I want you to clearly understand that we want you to share this information with others. Um, there are going to be a myriad of individuals that are going to be talking to you today. Um, I'm proud to, to talk about and, and present some of our residents who actually are entrepreneurs themselves. That's really important for you to know um, and for you to know each other um, and spread that word to, to, to others about the opportunities that our residents are actually presenting to the community in addition to our contractors, whether it be general contractors, whether it be professional um, services that might be able to be offered to the DCHA through some of our contracting and procurement needs. It's important that we all coalesce together um, and work ourselves through this. Even though during the midst of the pandemic itself, during COVID, DCHA still continued with this mission um, at a high rate of speed. Um, and this is just an example of all our efforts on um, putting this expo together um, to offer to you um, and to your fellow colleagues um, and other professionals within the district. Um, and, and in closing, I, I just want you to know, our transformation plan is Chairman Albert discussed, um, started off right now at $90 million of district dollars um, that we have been able to disperse a, a large number of that into the district itself through the use of contracts, um, especially through the trades. Um, and it's important to know that our transformation plan doesn't stop there. It's not just bricks and mortar. It is also human capital. And that's what we're talking about today. So in the nutshell, in the whole, um, this expo is a uh, a transcendent of our transformation plan, which talks about and drives the opportunity for human capital to support our residents um, and the community overall. So um, again, thank you for joining us this morning. Please spread the word. This I'm sure will be recorded and it's gonna be you know, put on our website for others to, to witness, um, to view and to be spread you know, through all the social media platforms that you might have about the opportunities here at the DCHA. So uh, again, to my team and to everyone who's participating, thank you so much. And, and Lori, um, please continue. Thank you, Mr. Garrett, and thank you, Mr. Albert. We appreciate very much the welcome. Uh, again, just a couple of things before we get started. Want to highlight again the fact that Mr. Garrett shared that we do have resident business owners that are going to be presenting to us today. Uh, four resident business owners who will be giving commercials about their businesses and what they do so that they can be able to advertise and let you all know that they're there, they're out there, and encourage again other uh, resident owners to, to come forward, as well as to be able to make sure we can be able to assist. So as part of that ability to assist, we also have representatives from the district's Department of Small and Local Business um, Development. They have a procurement division and they are here and they will be presenting as well so that they can be able to provide assistance to those resident business owners and any others, no matter where they are in the stage of their business development to be able to assist. And so we wanna be able to provide that as another opportunity for us to be able to, to help um, getting started and helping any business owners we have here uh, in the district. So I'd like to go ahead and get started. Um, Hubert, if you could go, get us started with the first slide, please. I'm going to be presenting on potential contract opportunities. And so first again, uh, it will be an overview, just talking about who we are as the District of Columbia Housing Authority, how we do business. So again, as far as our compliance, as well as our district funded compliance, and then business opportunities and going through some examples of, again, authority-wide and consulting services, service contracts and redevelopment. Because as Mr. Garrett alluded to, we do have the realm and spectrum of different services that are required because we are an independent agency. And as such, we need everything um, for us to be able to do our job, especially again, because we're the largest landlord in the district. And as such, we need to provide services, not only for us as a landlord, but also as a business entity. We'll also be able to take you through our website so you can be able to find us and know exactly where opportunities are. Um, we will have a uh, representative to be able to discuss section three, which is a HUD mandated program, and then go through again, our district partners, just to be able to share some information on again, who we work with in the district to be able to make sure that we're providing services to anyone, especially again, our contractors and our business partners to make sure again, we're available for you all. Next slide, please. 
Um, again, as far as introductions, you have already heard from our executive director, Mr. Garrett, as well as Mr. Neil Albert, who is the chairman of our board of commissioners. I, again, am the vice president of administrative services. Um, we'll also be hearing from our senior vice president of property management operations um, and the senior vice president for capital programs and real estate development, um, as well as the chief of planning, design and construction, our director of resident services, and again, our resident business owners, as well as the representatives from, again, our DC Department of Small and Local Business Development. Next slide, please. So again, who are we? Who is the District of Columbia Housing Authority? Like we have uh, I've said before, we are an independent agency of the District of Columbia and different from other agencies, we are regulated and funded by the federal government, the US Department of Housing and Urban Development. And so again, because of that, we do, we are again, non-governmental as far as project-based funding that we can also receive from the district government. Next, please. As far as a public agency, again, all of our purchasing does have to comply with the federal regulations. So again, part of that is the same that we would do with, that anyone would do as far as procurement is concerned. It must be done uh, using obviously sound judgment. We have to make sure it's done fairly, impartially, and equitably, as well as make sure that it complies obviously with federal and local laws and rules. And then the most important thing is again, that we are here to seek the best value and greatest overall benefit for the agency. So again, contractors can be able to reach us from anywhere from Southeast in Washington, DC to Portland, Oregon. And as long as again, they provide us the best value as far as the overall benefit for the agency, we can be able to award contracts. Next slide, please. Um, again, to accomplish our mission, just wanna share some information with you as far as again, that we work with vendors to make sure, again, it's the qu highest quality of goods and services, and that's what's important to us. Um, and again, just to be able to make sure you know, we manage our own procurement process, contracting, and compliances for all of our services with the DC Housing Authority. Next, please. This is just to be able to share some information with you all. And, and again, um, I, I was uh, remiss in not mentioning the fact that, again, this this presentation will be on our website. No one has to take notes. We will make sure, and again, because it is recorded, it will be available for anyone to be able to see um, and review later on. But this is just a comparison to show, again, D DCHA procurement requirements versus the district and how the majority of them are very similar. Um, and so, again, the goal is always for it to be fair and equitable. Again, the largest difference is the fact that, again, because we're federally, federally regulated, there are restrictions with regard to local geographical um, requirements as far as any kind of special requirements. And so, in effect, again, we want to make sure that you all are aware of the fact that we are here, we do have uh, the ability to procure, um, and that we still do work with small minority women-owned business enterprises, as uh, Mr. Albert um, spoke to, and that our goal, and that we do have goals with regard to Again, working specifically with local firms as part of our uh, inclusion plan that the board approved to make sure again that we are doing outreach and that we are working again as much as possible with any of our local business partners to be able to engage them as well. Next slide, please. Again, our economic inclusion plan for our contracting. So contracts that are a million dollars and above, we just give some information on again how there's a small focus difference with regard to, again, how the funds dictate um, exactly what we can be able to do as far as procurement and how expansive we can be as far as being able to make sure we're including um, as many people as possible. With uh, district projects, um, a lot of times, again, it, it's a requirement for the district's first source program. And with first source, again, we make sure that our section three program is included first and foremost. Section three is economic opportunities for our residents and all of our clients. And those are the ones, again, that we focus on first and foremost. But we work with the district's um, Office of Employment Services so that we can be able to make sure they are included and they get the opportunity to work on any projects that we have. Um, again, also shares with you, again, how with our examples of our new communities pro projects, that includes, again, making sure that we are engaging our local um, contractors, our local vendors, 
And again, local being the District of Columbia. Um, but again, we wanna make sure that everyone knows anyone um, in the country can be able to respond to our procurements because they are open and we have, but we do have our economic inclusion policy to make sure we are not leaving out anyone who can be able to provide those services for us. Next slide, please. With regard to our compliance, just wanna share a little bit with you again, um, because of the fact that there are a lot of requirements, uh, but usually those are ones that most of you already re are required to do regardless of where you work. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing work with the district specifically or exclusively working with the state of Maryland, Virginia, or anywhere else. Nine times out of 10, you already know that there's a requirement with regard to Davis Bacon and related acts as far as labor and compliance, which just means again for a payroll, they have to meet again the minimum payroll requirements that the federal government sets, which are usually less than the local payroll requirements. Um, Green Building Act, the Buy American Act, again, which was put in place again to make sure as much as possible there's a focus on, on buying goods and services and buy that are from the United States and produced here in the United States. Uh, again, apprenticeship program, again, that's definitely helpful for those who are learning a trade. And so they start as apprentices, get paid at a certain amount, and then make sure that we know their certificate moves them up and then they're eligible to be working at a higher pay, pay rate. Um, obviously, affirmative action in the District of Columbia Human Rights Act, very important as far as being able to protect civil rights acts for our residents. Uh, first source agreement, again, spoke to that with regard to, again, making sure there are opportunities for our residents um, as far as being able to work and have agreements. And then the District Certified Business Enterprise Utilization and Participation Agreement, which has to be executed and signed to make sure folks are aware of the fact that again, CBE rules are being applied and they're necessary as far as any particular contracts that we enter into. Next slide, please. With regard to our solicitations, again, they are all posted on our website and sent directly to our registered bidders. So again, depending on the type of solicitation, so those that we consider simplified, those are the ones that are less than $150,000. And usually those are the ones that again, either a request for quote, which is only determined by price, or it's called a letter of solicitation, which means they're factors and price. Those are sent directly to particular respondents that we know of or aware of. And again, to be make sure that we are aware of you. That's why we have the message there to please register for our qualified bidders list. Our qualified bidders list, there is no requirement. It just means that you're telling us who you are, what kind of business you have, to make sure again, when we send our solicitations out, you are receiving them. Even if it has nothing to do with what you think or what you told us that you do as far as your business, you may have a friend, a colleague that may be involved and may be interested and can be able to share that. Because our competitive acquisitions, which are ones, those that are $150,000 and above, those again can be done by price as well as determined by factor and price. Those two go specifically on our website and those also can go out to specific contractors who are interested. But again, those also would be going to our bidders. So we want to make sure, again, if you're not going to register for our bidders list, which costs nothing, and you can be able to go to our website to be able to register and uh, become a bidder, please visit our website often so that you can be able to see what opportunities are there. Again, they range the gamut, and we're going to go over that in just a little bit. Next slide, please. So again, starting with our business opportunities, here's just a little bit of what we have as far as an agency that we often solicit for. And these are opportunities that we know are available now or will be coming out in the next few months. So before the end of the fiscal year, or at least before the end of the calendar year, we're going to have solicitations issued for all of these services. So keep in mind, these are not just ones that we may do in the future. These are ones that we already know and have ascertained our departments require and need right away. So everything from again, office supplies to catering services, grant writing and management services, legal services, and records management consulting services. Again, those are the type of consulting services that a lot of times that we need from all of our departments, especially considering that we have, again, contracts and procurement, our general counsel's office, our finance department, all types of services that we require different requirements as far as consulting are concerned. Next, please. 
Again, as far as other consulting services, we have administrative hearing officers because we do have an office of fair hearings. And so we actually have hearing officers to respond to grievances. Our information and technology services, all types of, again, software and hardware requirements, marketing creative services for our office of public affairs, public relations and photography and audio and visual services. Again, those are critical for an agency to make sure, again, our, our needs are being met on all levels and that we are putting our best foot forward as far as letting folks know what we're doing. Executive recruitment services to make sure, again, we're getting the most talent that we can to help at the housing authority and technical accounting and financial services. As I mentioned, again, our office of financial management does require, obviously, that at, from time to time, we have consultants to be able to help them work through the math because you know, we all can't do numbers. So we need people to be able to help us with that as well. Next slide, please. So moving into property management, as I spoke to before, the DC Housing Authority is the largest landlord in the district. And as such, there are a lot of services, obviously, that we need to make sure that we're taking care of the residents that we have here in public housing. And so that ranges, again, to obviously heating and ventilation systems. So we have preventive maintenance and repair and water treatment for that. Um, obviously, our high rises require elevators. So we have elevator preventive maintenance and repair. Um, again, fire alarm systems and repair, as well as security systems and access control. That has maintenance and repair. Because again, some things that you don't think of in the apartments that you may live in, uh, the houses that you're in, all of these things, again, as soon as they're put in, some things break. We have to make sure we have maintenance and repair and they can be able to take care, be taken care of as quickly as possible for the needs of our residents. Next slide, please. Again, supplies, we've got parts and supplies, flooring, carpet installation, eviction services. Unfortunately, we do need from time to time. Emergency repair services, again, Definitely different needs that we may have for emergencies, landlord and tenant services, as well as landscaping. Again, we have a lot of properties, different types of units that we have, ranging from walk-ups to townhouses. And as a result, we do have a lot of land that does require landscaping. So again, different needs that you may not consider that we also have as far as the housing authority. Next, please. Again, duck cleaning. Environmental services, clearly that has become something that is on the forefront with regard to uh, the pandemic, the need for, again, um, safe environments, lead inspection, abatement services, the lead-based paint cleaning services, as well as mold testing and remediation, always crucial and important. Um, obviously, tools. Uh, we have welders that actually work for the Housing Authority, as well as plumbers, because, again, we have the range of services as well as, again, the fact that we're providing and make sure all of our residents can and do have the best services that we can be able to provide for them. Next slide, please. Um, as far as capital programs and real estate development, we also provide general construction. So those of you who are in the construction business, our construction management, we have architectural and engineering services, clearly those routine services that we issue uh, for design services, they may be in general, and it may be specifically specific for a particular project. And so our um, vice president, vice president and chief of planning will be able to speak more to these um, real estate broker services, as well as project management that may range from finance to development and real estate consulting services. And these particular services, again, may be specific for a particular project or they may be in general so that we have services available whenever we need them. Next slide, please. All right, so that is all for me. So you don't have to keep hearing me talk. Want to be able to open it for any questions that anyone may have at this point in time. So uh, looking here, I don't see any questions in the chat. So if anyone does have a question, if you wouldn't mind unmuting and letting me know if you have any questions at this point in time. I have a question. Sure. Okay, my name, my company is US infrared inspections and I don't think on the East coast uh, infrared inspections is a. Product that most people know about, but what we do is we do predictive maintenance. And if you're a housing authority and you don't do predictive maintenance, then what you're doing is you're doing reactionary maintenance. For instance, if you know, oftentimes in the winter time, when we have our cold snaps fires start in a lot of dwellings. And a lot of these fires are electrical. 
we do inspections to look at all electrical systems in order to make sure that they're safe, that they're that all of the lugs are tightened and that you're not arcing. We also do predictive maintenance on roofs, whereas there come uh, times when roofs need to be maintenance. And of course, in the DC metro area, all roofs, all roofers only want to replace the entire roof. Whereas we can go up and look at the roof and find out where the wet spots are and do a fraction of, and do a fraction of a roof replacement and still maintain the warranty as opposed to replacing the entire roof. So we do the type of inspection which can also uh, prevent buildings from having destructive measures and also predictive maintenance so that you can cut your costs. But nowhere in your presentation did I see anything that pertains to infrared inspections, which is a cost saving measure. Thank you for sharing that Mr. Wiggs. And uh, again, with regard to some of our measures, I don't know specifically where there's infrared, uh, but with all of ours, we do have preventive maintenance with all of our contracts. There is a requirement for not only the regular repair, but also preventive maintenance and services. But again, for your particular service, if you think it's something unique that you would like to share, you can be able to submit an unsolicited proposal in order to be able to offer what your particular services are different from anything that you think has been solicited. However, again, we actually are issuing solicitations again, as you saw for the HVAC, for the electrical, for different places where you indicated that you all do have the opportunity to provide services. And so again, what's also important is if you please register on our bidders list. So we do have your information and we can be able to make sure and send our solicitations out to you all as well as to all of our bidders so that you can be able to respond to that. So thank you for that. Thank you for sharing information on your company. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question. Um, sure. My name is Dennis Green. I represent um, DTEC Supporting Services, uh, General Contracting. Um, I have a question regarding the um, Davis Bacon Act. Is there some sure. type of uh, document or uh, software that we need to show that we go that we pay according to the um, Davis Bacon Act uh, pay ranges? So yes, um, whenever you actually uh, will see any of our solicitations, the actual pay rates and scale is actually attached to the solicitation in advance. So you will already know before you even respond to a procurement what the rate is at that time. And so that rate that is solicited is the rate that's applied to the contract. So you will know that, but we also have compliance specialists that work in the Office of Administrative Services, along with our contract specialists that are responsible for making sure they walk and work alongside all of our contractors to be able to respond to any questions, to make sure if you have, have not worked with, again, Davis-Bacon compliance that you do, to show you how to fill out and, and send certified payrolls, which means again, for anyone who's working on the job, we have to know exactly how much they are getting paid, how many hours they're working, what their fringe benefits are, so that we can be able to make sure again, it is at the required rate. But we work with all of our contractors, we have briefings, we have regular kickoff meetings, and then we also come on site and do regular compliance visits. So that again, we are responsive and we're available because we want to work with you. This is not a gotcha exercise. We want everybody to win. So it doesn't help us for folks not to be getting paid properly on the job. It doesn't help us for contractors not to be aware of what they have to do so that we work with you to make sure you're aware of, again, what the rates are and that, again, you're complying with that at all times. Thank you. Um, I do have a second question. I want to hold sure. the time. Uh, for no the, um, the, the first source uh, agreement, um, from my understanding, we can only um, uh, register if we have a contract in place, is that correct? Well, again, with the first source agreement, that would apply to the DC Housing Authority only when district funds are being used. And so, because again, we are federally funded, some of our contracts are, uh, we do have with receiving district funds and we would let you know that in the procurement. So no, uh, let me say first to your, your question, you do not have to have registered in advance. You can be able to register after you actually awarded a contract with the housing authority if it's district funded and you're required to follow the first source agreement. So that is not a requirement in advance. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate sure. it. Sure. Not a problem. I had a question. Yes. yes. Please go. Um, 
Hi, my name is Sherry Hooks from Lightweight Technologies here in the district. I am also a woman-owned small disadvantaged business um, and a CBE. I had, um, as I partnered with different agencies, we offer an a la carte of services, be it janitorial, culinary, and things of that nature. And I saw that on your uh, original flyer. But even with our IT, I did not see, or maybe I missed, um, concerning um, mental health counseling, any counselors. Um, and I did not see anything with credit counselors. So does that fall under just counseling or consultants? Um, how would that break up? And so it would fall under consulting services. And usually that and your services would be ones that we would work through our Office of Resident Services to identify needs, um, obviously for any specific services directly on the properties. Um, directly with residents, if those are available again, because these are services that we usually provide for the properties, not specifically resident specific. So those services that you're offering again, are ones that we probably work through resident services with. Um, and so, again, we would still want you and the different services that you have definitely to make sure you're on our bidders list. Uh, make sure again, if. Um, you didn't hear that we do have representatives that are here from the DTLBD office um, so that okay. they can be able to work with you where, no matter where you are as far as the stage of your business is concerned and make sure you have everything in place as much as possible so that, again, when opportunities arise, you're ready. And so that, again, you can be able to respond and anything that we can be able to get to be able to assist our residents, we're definitely focused on. And last question, and thank you so much for your time and being patient with us here as being informative on small business. Um, when I went uh, last evening and looked up, because I'm a CBE, I get journal emails, you know, about opportunities. Mm -hmm. I noticed that the site that I went to, I believe it's your, your RFP or bidders list. I don't know if there's a difference in your bidders list. And part two of this last question is, if it's already been awarded, will it say it's been awarded? I see some older things, but I don't know if they've been awarded. You know, if they're like by April 2nd, there should have been, you know, no bidding or the bidding has expired by April 2nd, but it's still up. Um, would the best thing to be just to call that person that's listed there under that? I mean, how does that work? And so we had a couple questions in there. So let me start with the first as far as um, there is a difference as far as the bidders list. Yes. So the bidders list again are contractors, individuals who have not worked with the housing authority before who would like to, so that we know who you are and we can be able to make sure we send information to you as far as opportunities that are available. And so we will walk through that in the program to show you exactly how to get to the website, how to maneuver to the bidders list so that you can be able to actually complete that form, very short form and send that back. Then on our website, where you saw again, our actual solicitations under how to do business with DCHA, that is where we maintain the list of all of our procurements. So we keep them up, even if they're older, just so that folks can be able to see there have been opportunities and the gamut of not only what's available, but you can also still click on it and see what the requirements are. Because you may say, I would have responded. Let me see if I qualify. Let me see what they're asking for. Let me see what kind of things I need to start getting together so I can be able to respond in the future. Um, again, it will also tell you when the closing date was. So once the, it has closed, unless you see another attachment there that's an addendum saying it was extended, then it would have been closed and would have been awarded. So um, again, that hopefully that can be able to help you as far as being able to maneuver through our process and to be able to respond to any of our procurements. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Barbary, I saw your your chat request for a question. Please proceed. So uh, it's kind of a question, but also to let you know who I am and, and what we do. I work for Didlake Incorporated. We're a nonprofit and ability one provider in the District of Columbia. We actually clean the White House. We clean the Vice President's building. We clean the Consumer uh, Financial Protection Bureau, and we clean the Department of Energy in the Forestal area. And we're, like I said, we're an ability one provider. Um, so we're always looking to hire adults with disabilities. I work a lot with RSA and I've been to the Department of Housing um, uh, job fair that you guys had, I think it was a year or two ago. It was near the main street, near the Safeway. There's the residential area and you guys had a, um, 
job fair there. So I just want to let you know who we are and we're always looking to expand. Um, also in Virginia, we actually cleaned the Pentagon. So for those who live in a district, it's not that far that they can get to the Pentagon. And um, so from the Pentagon and then of course, Army National Guard, which is also in Arlington. So I just want to let you know, we're always looking to hire a lot of folks with disabilities. 87% of the people we hire must have a disability. Um, some of the hard positions we're always um, looking for are uh, folks who do floor techs. And I don't know if anyone in your area or someone here um, teaches that to some of the folks and they can reach out to us for employment opportunities. Okay, so we was looking for someone who's a janitor. We don't expect experience or anything like that, but for someone who is interested in doing floor tech, we'll be more than happy to talk to that person, possibly even get him or her an interview. So I just wanna let you know who we are. Excellent, thank you so much for sharing that. And so again, um, ideally, if you would not please mind, again, letting us know who you are as far as a bidder, sharing your information. I don't know if you've registered, because again, we do wanna make sure that we know who all of you are. And again, because you've taken the time to come join us today, we want to be able to reach out to you and continue the momentum as far as our, not only our communication, but also the opportunity. So thank you so much for all of you for sharing who you are. Thank you. Any other questions? Just one quick uh, question, Lori. Um, could you ask the gentleman to put his information into the chat? Um, it's a great opportunity. I partner with some uh, groups that have disabilities. He's agreed, not a problem. Thank you, Ms. Hooks. All right, at this point, um, we're going to move on. I'd like to present Mr. Larry Williams. He is our Senior Vice President for Property Management Operations and Resident Services. He's going to talk about some service contracts and emergency work opportunities. Next slide, please. So good afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Williams. I jumped. The, I jumped the gun. This is supposed to be our public service announcement. This is our commercial time. I'm sorry. Ms. High. <laughs> it's Ms. High's turn. So again, as I mentioned before, we do have business resident business owners who we did reach out to who are also residents um, of the housing authority. And we wanted to give them the opportunity to be able to have public service announcements and share their business share what they're doing, share who they are, um, as well as give you the opportunity to know who they are so you can be able to be able to contract and partner with them. So our first um, advertisement is coming from Ms. Shanta High. Her business is the High Alert Emergency Preparedness. And so please, if you would welcome Ms. High, again, our first resident business owner. Ms. High, please. Hello, everybody. Can y'all hear me okay, see me okay? Ma'am. Great. Thank you very much. Salutations, everybody. Thank you, um, everyone, for the opportunity to present High Alert Emergency Preparedness at today's Vendor Expo. I am Ms. Shante High, the founder of Higher Prep or H A E R Prep. And I just want to take uh, just a moment to tell you a little bit about myself and my business. I am a disabled, low-income, disadvantaged mother and an aunt. I'm a civil rights activist and advocate and um, activist for senior and disabled rights, mental health awareness, uh, community and digital equity, small business, youth entrepreneurship, permanent housing, homelessness and uh, prevention, social justice, Black-owned businesses, yes, education, and I'm also the president of the council at Park Morton. I'm a fully registered and licensed small business, HUD Section 3 registered and black owned woman business located right here in Ward 1, founded right here at Park Morton, yay, in the Parkview community in the District of Columbia in 2019. Although I have more than 30 plus years of personal experience in emergency preparedness and disaster recovery. And I currently possess certifications in both the Federal, uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, also known as FEMA, and the Community Emergency Response Team, also known as CERT. And as a reviewer of disasters, I educate the public 
on the importance of being prepared for impending natural, technological, and intentional disasters. So with that being said, I just want you all to take a moment to ask yourselves, were you ready when COVID-19 shut down the entire world? And I just want you to take a moment to, you know, like Ms. Lori Bond said, answer with your emojis, or you can put it in the chat. Yes or no, were you ready? And I want you to be honest with me now. Were you ready? Did you have your food, your supplies, your mask? Were you ready? Were you ready when any of the past hurricanes, tornadoes, floods struck our country? Were you ready when any of the blackouts happened? Okay, what would you do when the next disaster strikes? Are you prepared? So I wanna tell you right now, don't wait until the next disaster strikes to prepare because once it does, it's already too late. It's already too late. So I want you to contact Higher Prep for future emergency preparedness webinars, map navigation services, emergency pandemic wedding services, because I'm an ordained minister and I can marry you even if you had to cancel your big wedding and you still want to elope. I can marry you right on the spot safely and legally. I'm a, a mobile DC notary. Um, so I offer DC notary public services and more. So my information is displayed so you can connect with us at 202-549-0439. I also have an alternative number at 202-753-9762, or you can, can connect with us by email, highalertprep at gmail.com, and on our social media at facebook.com slash highalertprep or follow us on Twitter at H-A-E-R Prep. And I look forward to prepping you all. So contact us today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. High. Everyone, please thank and congratulate Ms. High. It was a great presentation. Now we know, clearly we need to do better to make sure that we're ready. I think again, as you said, the world was not prepared, obviously for this <laughs> pandemic that we were in and still are in as much as people would like to think that we're out and, and are fatigued by the fact that COVID is still around. But again, that's a reminder, obviously, for us to be safe and for us to prepare so that we can be ready. So thank you again, Ms. High, so much for your presentation. You're again, welcome. This example of, again, one of our residents who has started a business, who had an idea, had a goal, and has set out to actually focus on that. And so we wanted to be able to highlight that and share that with you. All right, and so again, I, I want to also remind everyone again, the presentation is being recorded um, so that it will be available as well as on our website so that everyone can be able to see it and still be able to share it um, and get the information later um, for anyone who is interested and wants to be able to make sure I forgot this, I don't remember what they said, it will be there and it's available so that you can be able to reach back and be able to see in the information. Again, thanks, Ms. High. Uh, Mr. Welcome. Williams, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Williams, I'm sorry. I, I said you were coming up. I had to interrupt for a quick commercial break. You know, that happens sometimes on TV. Uh, <laughs> they say that we're going to get started and they got to go to commercial because we got to pay the bills. So let's pretend we had to pay the bills. And now you're up. So I'd like to present Mr. Larry Williams, our senior vice president of property management operations. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Ms. Bonds, for the introduction. Um, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't um, give a shout out to Ms. High. You did an outstanding job um, presenting your business today. Um, and I'm sitting over here like a, a, a proud dad cheering you on. So um, thank you for your presentation. Um, and we look forward to um, what you're going to do in the future. Again, my name is Larry Williams. I'm the Senior Vice President of Property Management Operations and Resident Services. Ms. Bond did, did an outstanding job presenting on all the different um, the, the different opportunities that may be coming from um, property management operations. Just a little bit about us. We got over 8,000 DCHA residents, over 42 properties. Um, some of the things that will be coming down the pipe very, very soon, um, and to the gentleman that mentioned the, um, the, infra, uh, it was the infrared um, inspections, 
we have um, we have a couple of um, procurements coming out in the next actually a couple weeks. So you will be seeing those and you should definitely pay attention and respond to those. But some of the things we're going to be looking for is um, things related to property maintenance, landscaping, um, mechanical operations in terms of our elevator systems and that kind of thing, as well as our security services. So you will see some solicitations out there. We look forward to um, seeing your responses and I will turn it back to Ms. Bonds to continue the program. All right, thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, so next up, we're going to go through and talk a little bit about our redevelopment and construction opportunities. And so I have two gentlemen who are gonna present on that because we have that much to be able to share. Uh, Mr. Synthel Sankarin, he is our Senior Vice President of Real Estate Development and Capital Programs, as well as Mr. Alex Morris. He is the Chief of Planning, Design and Construction. And these gentlemen are gonna tag team and share and give you a little bit of information and some pretty pictures on the kind of things that we do, the kind of construction and redevelopment that we have that, as far as work is concerned so that you can be able to know what's coming down the pipe as far as the housing authority is concerned. Gentlemen. Good morning, thank you, Lori. Uh, thank you, good morning, Lori. everyone. My name is Senthal Sankarin and as uh, Lori indicated, uh, along with, I'm here today representing the Office of Capital Programs and Real Estate Development along with my colleague, Al Alex Morris, who is our Hi. Chief of Planning, Design and Construction. Um, uh, our department is essentially two arms. We have a uh, redevelopment, development, substantial rehabilitation arm, and then we also have a uh, capital programs arm. And um, so uh, Alex and I are going to tag team a little bit talking about some of the projects that we have currently going that where we're either doing ourselves and contracting directly or uh, in conjunction with uh, a co-development partner. And we'll, but we'll also have contracting opportunities available. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about is Melvo, and I'll let Alex kind of handle this one. Thank you, Synthel. Um, Melvo is an acronym made up of the five first letters of the five projects in the in the site. This is a RAD transaction. We are converting five public housing sites using HUD's RAD Rental Assistance Demonstration Program to leverage private dollars to do renovations. The five sites are Montana Terrace in Ward 5, Elvins Road, which is in uh, Ward 8, uh, Lincoln Road, which is in, I believe, Ward 1, uh, The Villager, which is in Ward 8 along Southern Avenue, and then finally Ontario, which I believe is also in Ward 1. So um, those five properties are getting extensive renovations, primarily interior, um, not exclusively. There are some ex exterior projects as well, but mostly interior work um, to replace um, major systems like electrical systems, plumbing and mechanical, as well as doing kitchen and bathroom renovations throughout all of the units. There's 136 total units on the sites between the five properties, um, and we're bundling them into one project. We're anticipating starting this project in the summer of 2021, so just a few short months away. We've currently received bids from general contractors we have not selected anyone yet. We're still going through the review process with the three uh, bidders who submitted, and they will be in need of multiple subcontractors. So this could be an opportunity for you to, um, once that general contractor is announced, to put your name in the hat um, for subcontracting work related to the mechanical systems, the plumbing and electrical, as well as the interior finishes like kitchens and baths. Um, so this is a, an upcoming opportunity, which is fairly current, and um, we will make sure you're all aware, made aware of the GC selection once it's made. Next slide, please. Um, I'll uh, talk a little bit about this one. Uh, sure. This is uh, what, we're, what was recently announced that we will be issuing a solicitation for master planning services uh, uh, for Langston Terrace in Ward 5. Um, it will be a full scope master plan to develop uh, a plan for rehabilitation and redevelopment for the 278-unit uh, property. Uh, it is a historically designated property, so a, the, a large, the, the majority of the site will need to be preserved. Uh, however, there are going to be some uh, development parcels that might be available, and that's part of what we want to go, you know, be able to determine through um, the master planning process. 
and uh, we anticipate that uh, shortly thereafter, like this is a lot of the information that comes out of the faster planning process will help influence a future solicitation for uh, a co-development partner uh, in order to uh, to work with DCHA to redevelop the entire site. Um, and uh, so please do uh, stay on the lookout for that. I can't encourage you enough to register as Lori had indicated on our site so that you can become aware of when these solicitations do go live. Alex, do you want anything you want to add to regarding Langston? No, we're very excited about this opportunity though. Uh, the master plan will eventually lead to, as Synthel said, a developer solicitation and the anticipated full rehab rehabilitation of the site and historic restoration, as well as uh, potential development opportunities related to the property. Next slide, please. Uh, the, the next two are actually current uh, projects where we have developers uh, co-development partners already in line and that we're moving towards first phase of construction uh, later this year. Uh, this uh, Kenilworth project in uh, Ward 7, the, our development partner is, uh, the, uh, is a partnership between Michael's company and Warrington Development. And uh, they have a general contractor in Prestige Building Company. Uh, the project is about 166 units of new construction. This is just the first phase of the project. And there will be multiple phases as uh, as the development moves on. Um, and as uh, Alex had indicated, this is an example of a project where multiple uh, subs will be required. So uh, if, uh, if you know if you have some interest on this, definitely reach out, and we'll be able to connect you with the appropriate contacts at the developer and the general contractor, so you can find out when those opportunities will be become available. And it's anticipated that it would start late this summer. Next slide. Next one that we're very excited about is uh, uh, the first phase of development at uh, Berry Farm. Uh, uh, the first site is actually building 1B, which is the yellow building on this image. It'll be a 108 unit senior building. Uh, it developed in partnership with um, our, our co-development partner, uh, Preservation of Affordable Housing, also known as POA, P-O-A-H. Uh, there, they have a general contractor selected in Hamel Builders, and will be uh, looking for subs as well um, as they move forward through their development pro process. They're look, they're currently lining up all of their financing and are, are uh, should be breaking ground later this year. Next slide. So, so I'll, I'll hand this off to Alex and we can talk a little bit more about our capital program where we will be distributing uh, quite a few projects. Uh, and uh, this will actually include a lot of district funded projects. And, um, and I think as Lori has indicated before, when we're spending district dollars, we'll also have certain requirements that go along with that for DCHA's inclusion funds. Right. So um, th I'm gonna remind everybody at this point that all of this information will be placed on the website. So you don't need to take notes. Uh, there are gonna be a lot of lists on the next three slides, but I'll go through them quickly. The first slide represents our uh, design and planning projects for the coming year. Um, there are a total of, if my count is correct, 10 projects on this, uh, or 10 sites on this list. Claridge Towers, Garfield Senior, Highland Additions, James Creek, Kelly Miller, Fort DuPont Dwellings, Langston Terrace, Potomac Gardens, Stoddart Terrace, and Woodland Terrace. And they're scattered across the district uh, in multiple wards of the district. And we're looking to do architectural studies, uh, feasibility studies, and master planning studies. The, the work will be assigned to a bench of architects and planners that are currently being formulated. We're working on the evaluation for that new bench of what we call in IDIQ, which is indefinite duration, indefinite quantity contracts. Once that, bit, once that list is out, we will make sure that you get uh, information about that if you're interested in subcontracting to any of these architectural engineering or planning firms, uh, you may feel free to do so. This is all district funded work. And so uh, it will be subject to the uh, district hiring uh, goals for local and uh, certified small business enterprises. So these uh, folks will probably be motivated to talk with you. Next slide, please. These are our upcoming uh, construction projects. Many of these are also funded with district dollars, and so they'll also be subject to those CBE and SBE requirements. Um, 
I won't read them all, but you can see there's a, a very large list of projects at multiple sites across the district. Um, family sites and, and senior buildings are included in this list. And it includes everything from sidewalk repairs to replacing automatic doors, replacing security card systems at front entrances, cleaning ductwork and replacing rooftop fans, doing elevator modernization, um, yeah, mold and asbestos abatement, you know, you name it across the gamut. And all of this stuff is expected to take place this year. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is the list of our what we call our job order contracting or job contractor bench. This is a list of pre-selected firms who submitted in 2019 for our bench of contractors. This list will be available on the website through this presentation. So please don't, don't take notes. If you can't write that fast, don't worry about it. But these are the 13 contractors with their contact information, the name of the contact person, the email address, and the phone number of each of the 13 contractors on our bench. These folks represent general contracting as well as electrical and mechanical uh, trades. And they do hire extensively for subcontractors to perform different parts of the work. So please reach out to them. All of these folks have already been notified that you may be reaching out. And so they're prepared to take your call or your email and speak with you about subcontract subcontracting opportunities through the JOC contracting bench. And with that, I think we're at the end of the OCP presentation. Next slide. Hubert? Yes. Okay, so I guess we're at a Q&A period. I'll kick it back to Lori. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Morris, Mr. Sanford. Sure. Any questions from anyone with regard to all that information you received on our redevelopment and construction? I guess we gave so much information, they said they got it. Okay. <laughs> well, as you can see, we do have a lot of projects that are planned. We do have a lot of work that we have that is coming up. And again, wanted to make sure that you definitely took note of the last slide, which is, again, the list of all of our contractors that, again, they went through a solicitation. So they were procured. And again, because of the fact that we do have so much construction work, we do, again, a solicitation uh, every five years for our major contractors that handle our general contracting. And again, it could be mechanical, electrical, or any other discipline that we know is coming up. And so as a result, subcontractors can respond and receive work through there, but we do have other opportunities for construction. Um, I do see a couple questions coming in. So the last one that I saw, just because I'm, I'm trying to, to focus and respond, there are the subcontractors. Again, subcontractors, we would encourage you, yes, to please register uh, on our, on, as far as a bidder but you can be able to contact any of those job contractors, as Mr. Morris said, directly, because again, you may be working on projects that we have or projects they have unrelated to the housing authority. They are working and they're working contractors that have worked any place. So we would encourage you definitely right. to reach out to those contractors, but definitely still become a bidder on our bidders list. Um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, good morning. My name is Sheila Cross Reed. I'm the uh, owner of Evangel Estate Services. I'm a CBE, woman-owned business, 30 years in the um, real estate industry and, and the um, <clears throat> uh, development industry as well. Uh, my question is, in regard to brokerage, I did not see in any of your presentations and of the housing projects, any opportunities for brokerage services, real estate brokerage services. And I find that often those, those particular contracts go to um, some of the large companies as, as opposed to smaller um, uh, independent brokerage companies. And I want to know what kind of opportunities are now being open to uh, brokerage opportunities for the small um, DC CBE businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, good morning. Thank you again for your question. So I will start and I'll just turn it over to Mr. Morris if he has additional information he wants to share. We have um, routinely been actually soliciting for brokerage services. And so that was part of the presentation a little earlier. You might have missed it. Um, and so that we have previously also solicited and awarded contracts for, again, real estate broker services. But we do have, again, services that are coming out um, very shortly. So that, again, there is the opportunity for anyone, again, because we don't restrict for it, uh, again, to say that it, only large, only certain firms can respond to it. It would definitely be based on the volume. Again, we encourage if you'd like to contract or partner or subcontract, 
again with other companies if you feel like it is a project that may be larger than you're familiar with for any of the small companies to be able to handle it or you respond directly and again, make sure you're responding to each of the criteria and the factors because that is what's critical. Again, the, the issue, regardless of the size of the firm, where some firms do receive less points is only because they're not responding to all the factors or they're not providing all the information for our panel to be able to know how great of a firm you are and to know that you can be able to achieve those. But in answer to your question, we do have real estate brokerage services that are forthcoming and they will be available and so that we will be putting them out. And so if you're new and working with the housing authority, please be able to go to our website under doing business with DCHA and complete the bidders application so that we know who you are and we can get it to you directly. Um, and you don't have to keep coming to our website to be able to know where it is and know that it's out. Lori, thank you so much for your answer. However, that's not my thank question. You. I'm a former, um, I am a housing authority contractor. I have received a, bro a brokerage opportunity to, for my company through the years, but I'm speaking in terms of the contracts given to developers who then have brokerage opportunities. This is what I'm referring to. It's, uh, is there any kind of, um, of a monitoring to, to ensure that these, these contracts also go to minority businesses? I do understand the housing authority. I'm very pleased with their performance. However, I'm speaking of the greater picture when you have these large contracts going to these various uh, developers who then right. have the opportunity to hire the brokerage firms and don't. This is what I'm referring to, Lori. So please, specifically, this is what my question is. I'd like to get an answer to that. Thank you. Understood. Um, yeah. uh, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. So, uh, yeah, I think um, when we hire or solicit to uh, partner with a development partner, we have the opportunity as an agency to encourage them or, or require them to hire locally for some of their services. Um, that's a very good point, and we will definitely take a look at that. I will give you a call directly because I'd like to speak to you about that. This is something okay. we've been grappling with for the few years, and I think hope that your information, okay. uh, the presenter's information is going to be made available on this particular presentation. For mm -hmm. everyone. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. You're okay. very welcome. Thank you. I saw there were a couple of other uh, individuals who indicated they had questions. I'm sorry I wasn't able to grab them in the chat. Uh, please speak up and share if you have any questions. Good morning. This is Jim Brasselli. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. How are you, Mr. Brasselli? Hi. How are you all? Um, I wanted to touch base. Um, my name is Jim Brasselli. We're with a company called Digital Video Solutions. Uh, we're uh, an MBE in the state of Maryland, uh, not specifically in the Washington, D.C., because our office is just outside the border there. But we provide electronic security, security cameras, and access control systems throughout the city to um, dozens of affordable housing communities throughout the city. Um, we actually also work with the police department in conjunction to make sure that they are trained on our camera systems. And I understand DCHA just went through um, a construction of a control center or command center for cameras. Um, just kind of curious how the, the department is going to coordinate the effort to make sure that um, the camera systems are coming into the command center. Um, are they going to be looking to um, standardize on a system? Um, I'm not really sure whom the right person is to ask that question, but uh, thought I would ask. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for your question. I know Mr. Morris can be able to speak to some of the information related to the security systems, but I just want to share first and foremost mm -hmm. that although that work um, has occurred, we do have additional work that is going to be forthcoming with regard to security systems at more of our properties. So there will be opportunities to respond. There will be, again, the list of the specific properties, as well as the scope of work that we are looking for. Um, some that are specific just for security. And then we have the general long-term where we have our alarm and security system uh, preventive maintenance so that there's not only the installation, but the maintenance of those services. And again, those solicitations will be forthcoming as well. Again before the end of either this fiscal year or very shortly thereafter. So within the next few months, you'll be seeing solicitations with regard to security services. Um, again, with regard to a lot of our properties. Mr. Mars, you can please respond to the question specifically on the control center. Uh, well, yeah, so we did, we did do a central command center and control center at the uh, 1133 headquarters. 
uh, it was built out for the uh, Office of uh, Public Safety, for the DC Office of Public Safety. And we have currently integrated some of the cameras at some of the sites into that uh, operations center. I do not believe that all of the cameras and all the sites are integrated at this time. So I think I would build off of what Lori said and say that we're, we'll probably be looking to do further integration and there will be uh, you know, opportunity coming up in the near future for you to look at that. Yeah, and not to get uh, too into the weeds of the question, yeah. I understand everyone's time mm -hmm. here. Um, I think one of the unique things that we're seeing is number one is the technology that we have actually has analytics so that it qualifies for COVID related funding. Um, mm -hmm. Does things like mask detection, um, mm -hmm. uh, occupancy alerts and things like that, but it also could help with what will inevitably be a bandwidth concern at the command center there, when you start talking about hundreds and thousands of cameras, um, the bandwidth becomes uh, yep. a, a problem. Um, yep. So, you know, if there's a way that, uh, and I think uh, Mr. Williams has already said he would definitely help put me in touch with the right person, yep. but um, I'd love the opportunity to, to discuss, you know, details of what we've experienced throughout the city already mm -hmm. um, that might help you and your endeavors there. Yeah, that's great. Um, so I'll put my uh, contact information out, my email address, and you can reach out to me and then we can set up a meeting. I'm not the only person involved in the security camera issue, so there's sure. other departments that touch that. Um, we'll put together a group that can speak to that issue uh, with all the right people in the room. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Were there any other questions? I'm sorry, I have one more quick question. Um, we've been struggling with the, with, um, the idea of the MBE status in, the, in Washington, D.C., because we're a Maryland-based company. Um, we're an African-American-owned African -American -owned company. We're MDOT certified. Do, do you know of any way that there's a way to reciprocate that within the, the district? Um, you know, we, we're obviously firm believers in it, and we want to ensure that, you know, that that's recognized. I don't know, we're members of NMSDC, um, you know, which is a minority council in, in the district. I'm just looking so, for advice. Yeah. Sure. So, again, because we are the housing authority and we're an independent agency that is federally funded, again, we do recognize designations from other states, from other jurisdictions. And so Great. that's not an issue. And so you can be able to, again, whenever you respond, you submit that information and that is recognized and you will be counted for that. Oh, great, great. Um, I see one question there. Is there need for pandemic cleaning? So I'm presuming again, when you refer to pandemic cleaning, it's with deep cleaning and with the opportunity to do that. And so again, um, at the housing authority, we do have already um, engaged a janitorial company that has been doing our deep cleaning um, throughout the pandemic for all of our administrative facilities, but actually the staff of the housing authority um, are responsible for the deep cleaning of the actual properties. And so we have staff that have been trained and taught how to do the more extensive work as far as the common areas at the public housing developments to be able to try to make sure that they're doing the best they can to clean and provide that opportunity. Um, but again, uh, one thing that I will say too, um, next coming up um, after our question and answer period is our next commercial break. So I'm gonna go ahead and segue into that. Um, if you could please go to the next slide, please, Mr. Tom. Um, because our next slide is actually a resident owned business uh, presenter, Mrs. Shannon Morning. And she actually has a cleaning company, Morning Cleaning LLC. And so it's a perfect segue into, again, what she has to offer uh, as another resident owned business owner. And so, uh, Ms. Morning, if you could please come up and present and let us know who you are and why we need to engage your services. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. How are you guys today? Good. Thank you. Good morning. Okay, I'm, I'm ex extremely excited to introduce Morning Cleaning INC. We are a grown commercial cleaning company. Um, we uh, provide, we are located, I'm sorry, we are located in Washington, D.C. We 
provide a long range of services to commercial industry, industrial and personal clients. We also plan to work alongside the real estate agents to arrange in lease cleanups for residential properties. Morning cleaning brings a fresh and professional approach to cleaning services. Our goal is to exceed the expectations of every client by offering outstanding customer service, exceptional quality, and a great value for service. We are a small organization and we do not have large companies right now, hopefully soon, structure from management to workers. Uh, the management also always oversees the workers and provide enough support to carry out certain tasks in a professional manner. All of our staff are highly trained and is chosen from their integrity and work experience. We work alongside with people who can provide service such as floor stripping and sealing, towel and grout cleaning, which gives us the competition or competitive over other cleaning services. We use the latest model cleaning equipment, which would be the, the, the blowers. We have uh, color code cleaning systems in order to prevent any misuse of chemical and to protect health and safety of our, of our vulnerable customers. Staff, is all, are, are, staff are educated to notify the management about any workplace hazards or safety issues in order to prevent future injuries. We have an occupational health and safety plan in use to prevent any injuries and maintain a safe work environment for our workers and to have minim minimize the risk of any injuries to the general public also. Um, you can reach me at 202-766-7761 and our email would be morningcleaninc at yahoo. I'm working on a website, but hopefully it's, it's, it's right behind the presentation. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Morning. Everyone, please thank Ms. Morning for presenting and sharing information on the morning cleaning. Again, clearly during um, this pandemic and the environment that we're in now, cleaning services are critical, they are important. And obviously being able to know that you have a cleaning services with staff as Ms. Morning said, that are dependable and that are uh, monitored, managed, again, and experienced is very important. So thank you so much, Ms. Morning, for sharing, again, the Morning Cleaning LLC business that you have started, and we look forward to hearing more about it. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, next slide, please. We're going to go now into, again, giving a little information on the section three program. And again, we refer to section three and for those who may not have done any federal contracting before, uh, section three is a HUD federally mandated program that just ensures that in every contract that we have, there's a requirement for economic opportunity for any of our clients. And so in order to present that, we have Mr. Brian Harris. He is a director of the Office of Resident Services and he's going to share uh, some information with regard to those economic opportunities. Mr. Harris. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Bonds. Um, and as Ms. Bonds mentioned, I'm going to be um, presenting today our Section 3 overview um, and compliance. So next slide. And so as Ms. Ms. Bonds already mentioned as well, uh, Section 3 was mandated as a provision of the Housing and Urban Development HUD Act of 1968. And so what that, what that presented was opportunities to foster local economic development for our residents. Next slide. So there's several different types of contracts when we talk about Section 3. Um, there's a construction contract, also there's professional services and all other, right? And so when we talk about hiring, um, there's a threshold of 30% of all new hires, and that's attached to the actual mandate. When we're talking about contracting as it relates to construction, 10% of the total contract value subcontracted to Section 3 business concerns. And then when you're talking about the contract type as far as professional services and all other, 3% of the total contract value subcontracted to Section 3 business concerns. The other piece is other economic opportunities when either, when neither hiring, excuse me, nor subcontracting for a contract or task order or when unable to hire 
or to sub or meet the subcontracting goals, other economic opportunities should be provided in the amount commensurate with the contract value. That's very important. Um, if you're not hiring, the thought is that there are services provided to our residents training opportunities for economic empowerment. Next slide. This is just a bar graph of just a comparison of some of our section three highs for the last three years. As you can see in FY18, we had a total of 88 section three hires. Um, FY19, we had a total of 97 section three hires. And FY20, we had a total of 73 section three hires. Next slide. This is just more of a breakdown. For, it's from an industry perspective for our FY21 section three hires. I think, as you can see, there's a range a variety of different opportunities that have been presented for our residents, anywhere from janitorial opportunities to laborers, facilities, maintenance, working at a warehouse, potentially clerical work, painters, um, police officers, and things like that. So there are a variety of different opportunities that are connected to our section three employment opportunities. Thank you. Next slide. Um, just to reiterate, required, um, if unable to fulfill hiring or subcontracting goals, or if neither hiring nor subcontracting a project, I just want to put emphasis on all other contracts must be approved by a Section 3 compliance specialist prior to any implementation. And so we thoroughly put emphasis on making sure that it fits the need. Um, it's not just something that's rambunctious. You want to make sure that it's something that's trending, something that can support our residents as they move towards self-sufficiency. Next slide. Um, just to reiterate again, economic opportunities, just going to share a couple of opportunities to provide that, that, that sense. So workforce skills training for DCHA residents, other self-sufficiency trainings for residents as well, entrepreneurial trainings or pro bono services for DCHA resident-owned businesses or startup businesses, um, pro bono services for our resident councils, legal clinics, uh, we become a host and sponsor for our Do Your Best interns, which is our DCHA Summer Youth Employment Program, which we're gearing up for now. Um, also provide self-sufficiency program at the Envision Center. Um, also be a sponsor commit for our Commitment to Excellence Scholarship Program for educators to continue their education. And then also, more importantly, innovative and creative opportunities for DCHA residents that are applicable and approved by our Section 3 compliance specialist. So we're always looking to be creative and try new things um, as we know trends are changing. Next slide. So these are just some highlights. Uh, the District of Columbia Housing Authority Section 3 program has been recognized by HUD Mid-Atlantic Leadership as having a premier program in Region 3 with many innovative and creative efforts towards self-sufficiency for our residents. Next slide. This great display is, a, is the connection between our DCHA modified apprenticeship training program and our section three program, right, in partnership. And so when our trainees come to the end of their six month training with our property management operations team, um, there are opportunities available through our for employment through our section three program. So some great photos there. Next slide. Once again, this is my PSA, Ms. Bonds, um, to highlight. So you've heard from two of our, our resident-owned businesses, uh, Ms. High and also Ms. Morning. And so you, I look forward to hearing from Ms. Nelson, Ms. Gooch in the future. So this is just another PSA to shout those individuals out on their great job for their resident-owned businesses. Next slide. And so in conclusion, for any, any Section 3 inquiries, please contact our Section 3 Compliance Specialist, Ms. Sandra Littles. Her email is actually at the bottom of this slide, and actually she's on the call um, to answer when we go to our QA period for there any, if there are any questions now, or you can email her at a later date. So thank you so much, and we'll go to the QA piece. Next slide. Thank you, Ms. Bonds. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Harris. And as you all can be able to see clearly, there's a lot of opportunities again through our Section 3 program where you can be able to engage our residents and our clients. Again, not just through hiring, but through a lot of different things and a lot of different ways that we can be able to share again with our clients and making sure that again, they are either able to be hired as far as opportunities are concerned, or there's opportunity again to engage as far as programming, internships, summer programs, different things that we have available. Um, before we go into the question and answer period, um, I know Mr. Garrett actually has an announcement. I wanna give him the opportunity to share with us before we move forward with the question and answer period. Mr. Garrett. Hey, you know what? Thank you, Lori. Um, thank you, everyone. I think I, my camera's all screwed up now, but 
Um, I just wanted to jump on real quick. I have another meeting at 11, but I wanted to jump on real quick and just um, let our um, resident entrepreneurs know that next week, um, look for a huge announcement from the DCHA in reference to um, support for your businesses. I, I believe we have a great opportunity for micro grants um, for entrepreneurial residents um, that we have within the agency. So I, I just wanted to put that out there so you can be aware of it. Um, we'll definitely make note uh, of who participated today, get that information to you. Um, but also, um, will there will be an announcement created by the Department of ORS. So I just wanted to throw that out there to get you guys excited um, to anticipate something next week coming down the pike. Excellent. Great news. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone for participating. Really appreciate it. All right. So next again, want to open it up for questions. Um, anyone who had any questions with regard to anything specific on section three or anything that you've heard thus far. Mr. Buck. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Mr. Butler. Uh, we're licensed, bonded, insured, and certified uh, here in the metropolitan area. Uh, we specialize in uh, masonry and concrete. Uh, we would love to have the opportunity to uh, participate and join with you all and do business. I'll uh, email addresses. Uh, hbblue123 at gmail.com. Uh, have been, uh, well, myself, I've been doing this type of work for over almost 50 years. Uh, I've done work for senators, congressmen. Uh, I've done the carriage coach house for uh, Jane Dixon. Uh, Senator Hatfield, uh, Senator John Drowman, Hollins. Um, what can I say? I've done a lot of work up and down the uh, East Coast. Uh, as they say, the spook behind the door, uh, doing museums, prisons, and schools. Uh, I've done a lot of work with uh, uh, Donahoe. Uh, Long masonry. Um, I even laid out or well, helped laid out uh, uh, Montgomery Blair High School. Uh, I never would have dreamed that I had the opportunity. And uh, a good friend of mine, uh, well, that I used to do business with or tried to, uh, which which was uh, uh, Jerry Donahoe, that passed. Uh, not long ago, uh, but nonetheless, we're here and willing and able. We have, uh, I guess, the credentials, the insurance, what have you. Please give us a call. Let's do business. Mr. Butler, for sharing your information and letting us know you're here and the masonry work that you do. Um, again, if you heard some of the information that we presented earlier on construction and the redevelopment projects that we have coming up. Um, there's definitely an opportunity to be able to engage with you um, as part of the presentation that we're gonna be uploading on the website. We also have, again, the list of the contractors, the general contractors that we also already work with that you can reach out to for any sub work. Um, we do have opportunities for, again, some of our make ready vacant units that we all also respond to and provide. Um, but more importantly, if you could please make sure that you stay on so that we can show you how to be able to go through our website um, so that you can be able to um, indicate that you are a bidder who is interested in doing work with us so that we can be able to reach you that way so that we can be able to have your information um, as well as all your contact information. And then for any solicitations that we have available, we can be able to reach you and you can be able to respond. But there are a number of different ways we can be able to Again, make sure we can engage and so that you can start working with us. All right, thank you so much. And thank again, you. I might add that I am a master stone mason and bricklayer. Thank you, appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? All right, 
I would just remind everyone, please, to again, remember to mute your devices uh, once you have spoken. And again, that the presentation is recorded, so you'll have the opportunity to go back and get some more of this information later, as well as be able to, again, see the presentation uploaded on our website so that that'll be available to you. Um, next slide, please. And so our next public service announcement or commercial that we have available is from Ms. Crystal Nelson. Uh, Ms. Nelson is going to be presenting information with regard to sweet tooth edibles. And so again, at this time of the morning, everyone can anticipate and look forward to, uh, again, the idea uh, of sweet. Um, Mr. Butler, I would just ask if you could please mute your device. I can still hear you. There you go. All right. Because I want to make sure that everybody hears Ms. Nelson and knows what kind of sweets that she has so that she can get our mouths watered and ready to be able to engage her. And so, Ms. Uh, Nelson, if you could please, everyone welcome Ms. Nelson to present Sweet Tooth Edibles. Hello, everybody. I'm Crystal Nelson. I'm the sole owner of Sweet Tooth Edibles. I'm here for your sweet tooth for any sweet tooth that you have. I started baking due to my mom, but God told me to do it. Last year in August, I was sitting here waiting on a bus, and God said, you know what, Crystal? You should start baking them cakes. So I jumped up and I said, you know what? I am. So I went to work, and I told Mr. Willie, I said, Mr. Willie, which my story I just said, I said, I'm going to start baking. And he said, how much your cakes cost? I told him $15, he gave me 20 So I made my first cake for my outside customer beside my family and friends. And from there, I started having my customers at work. And then by word of mouth, I started making cakes, cupcakes, and cookies for family and friends and for the post office and for some of the people who work for DC Housing. So I have a website, which is Sweet Tooth Edibles 281 at gmail.com. I also have an Instagram page. It's got a Sweet Tooth 281 Instagram. So if you want to reach out to me, you can email me. You can call me. I'm here. If you have a sweet tooth, I'm here to bake it for you. And I'm the old-fashioned person that bakes. I'm the type of person that bakes the cake that when grandma used to bake and we sitting in the kitchen waiting for her to finish with the batter so we can stick our finger in it and eat it. So I'm that type. So if you want a German chocolate, I have it for you. If you want an upside-down pineapple cake, and I got a picture on my other phone I'm about to show you all. See, you know, I don't know if y'all can see it, but you can get cakes like this, you know. Um, so I actually bake to your taste, not what people want you to have. Like even when it comes down to your birthday, people just buy cakes that they want you to have. No, I get you the cake that you like to taste so you can come back. If you want that lemon on lemon, I'm here for you. My mom gave me a special recipe that I've been working with for the past few years that everybody love it. And I feel like if I, once I get more orders of more people, my business will grow. The pandemic has slowed it down because some people can take snacks and things like that to work and give it out to the employees or to their coworkers. But once everything starts to pick up and I get more orders and more customers, I feel that my business is going to be booming because I would like to open up a shop in the next year or two. And I want to also be one of the best DMV baker in the area because I know I have that talent, I have that taste, and when you get that sweet tooth, you will call me for that, for any cake that you want, any cupcake, any cookie, any brownie, and they homemade, with love. See, when God tell you to do something, you do it, because he don't put you in a position for no reason. So he put me in a position, and I'm in this position, and I'm going to move forward, and I know I'm going to succeed. And even though right now the business is slow, I know it's going to speed up and I know it's going to pick up and I'm going to be able to boom in the future. So, like I said, when God tell you to do something, you do without question. That's just who I am. And I'm in Ward 5. I've been baking for years. And like I said, my mom taught me and she gave me a special recipe. So, I don't have no complaints. I never had any complaints on that of my cake. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. Excellent. We love to hear because, again, you made us hungry. You showed us pictures. Now we're thinking about all the different kind of cakes and pies and desserts that you do that you can make. So please, <laughs> um, again, yeah. we have your information. We'll, I know folks are going to reach out to you, call you, and everybody's going to say, can you do this? Can you do that? 
Um, I think the only thing that you left out is the fact that we realize you are actually to deliver. So that's an additional yes. service that most people are not able to receive. The fact that you actually deliver your case and, and your desserts. And so people need to know that because again, during this pandemic, when folks don't want to come out, then you can be able to provide that additional service. So thank you so much. We appreciate obviously you sharing. Um, and again, hopefully we can be able to help your business to move forward and to succeed. So everyone, please thank Ms. Nelson for sharing again, sweet tooth edibles. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next slide, please. So last but not least, we have Ms. Vanessa Gooch. Ms. Gooch is coming again as our resident business owner who has her business called Nessa Fabulous. And Nessa Fabulous is closing in retail and she wants to share with you what she does, how she can connect you to your retail and how she can be able to help you to move forward uh, with Nessa Fabulous. Ms. Gooch. Ms. Gooch, are you still there? I know you were there before. Did we lose you? You're still on mute, Ms. Gooch. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Can you now hear me now? Yeah, okay, okay. All okay. right. Hello, Ms. Gooch. I am Vanessa. I am Vanessa Gooch, and my my company, or let's say my uh, hobby, uh is vanessa fabulous and i uh, acquired this hobby uh, back in 19 uh um what it was in 1996 when i was doing decorator consultant uh i would go into people's homes i'd help them decorate and uh it was a business that was run by a lady called uh i forget her name what's her name mary mary crowley Mary Crowley and Mary uh, uh, Kay were school uh, buddies, and they, it's a story about them. You know, if I ever meet you or hook up with you, I can tell you about it. But that's how I got my hobby, and that's how it turned into a business. Uh, I sell things that uh, I like and hopefully other people like, and I see everybody wearing the styles and the fashions that that I that I have, and I also uh am capable of coming to your location or having you come to a location that i may possibly be uh doing a vendors a show um or you could even come to my home you know uh i list my phone number uh and my my email which is here you know um and i also have a, a cash app you know Everything is easy today, and we as ladies should look fabulous, you know, because like the lady said about preparing for uh, uh, the the pandemic that we're having now, preparing for the earthquake. She went all the way back to the earthquake, and I remember the earthquake. I was standing inside of the uh, medical center on, on Martin Luther King Avenue, and it cracked a it cracked the whole center of the building and i just happened to be standing on the side and it on the top floor and i said oh my god she's got some real good information there you know so um i am fabulous um i would love to help you um um you know dress if you needed some suggestions or some help with decorating your home I still have those skills. I did it so long. I did it like 15 years and I had like 11 people working under me. Um, oh, let me see. I guess that's about it. You know, I have paintings. I have uh, clothes. I have uh, 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 cooking objects for newlyweds. You know, ladies that learn how to fix things in their in their house have the right, right cooking objects. I'm capable of uh, getting that for you. Or telling you how to go about getting that, um, and I guess that's about Miss. That's about it, Miss Lane. Did I leave anything out? I did graduate from UDC. I went to DC Central Kitchen. I have a certification for international chef. You know, I got skills. I got skills, and all this information I'm getting today, I'm going to use them. Thank you guys for thinking about us. Thank you so much, Miss Gooch. We appreciate very much hearing about you 
hearing about Nessa Fabulous. And again, obviously you are a business owner that does have experience and expertise and has a lot of different roles that you can be able to play. Your information is already up. So we, everyone can be able to see it and it is part mm -hmm. of the presentation. So folks are getting it and folks can be able to reach out to you definitely to be able to endorse Nessa Fabulous. Everyone, please thank Ms. Gooch. Appreciate very much you sharing that information with us and you letting Thanks. us know who you are. Thank you. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, next slide, please. Um, so what we'd like to do next is just to be able to take the opportunity again, as we've been mentioning, uh, as far as our website is concerned, again, when you put in DCHA or you put in DC housing, it will take you again to our website, which is dchousing.org. And again, here on our website, right at the top under select language where it says businesses, you would click there um, because again, anyone who's interested as far as doing business with DCHA, you would click there on business and that will take you again to solicitations and it will take you again to where you can be able to complete a bidder's application. Again, the bidder's application just lets us know who you are. It just gives us an opportunity to reach out to you directly with any opportunities, but again, it's available for you. Again, this will be up, but again, our website is www.dchousing.org so that you can be able to visit the Housing Authority anytime. <clears throat> it will bring that up for you. Next slide, please. Um, next, just want to share a little bit of information again, our district partner agencies that we have and that we work with. Um, we talked before a bit about DC Department of Employment Services and Office of Human Rights. Um, but most importantly, too, I wanted to share a guest that we have with us who are also going to be able to help work with, um, again, some of our business owners that have already shared their experiences um, so that we're fortunate enough to be uh, joined by folks from the DC Department of Small and Local Business Development. They actually have a procurement and technical assistance center. Um, Ms. Vanessa Kadiri is here um, along with some of her colleagues to be able to share some information for our business owners, whether again, they're small business owners or larger, whether they've just started out or they're still working on getting a registration with the district on how to be a business. And so next, I'd like to, for the next slide, I'd like to introduce Ms. Kadiri to be able to share some information with you all with regard to um, the small and local business development. Next slide, please, from Ms. Kadiri. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bond. Um, thank you for having us today. So far, it's really been a great event. Learned a lot of information. And uh, one of the things that I picked up from all the pre presenters so far is the importance of relationship building. And I think that's going to be key and essential for the businesses on the line so that they can move forward to their next step. And so my name is Vanessa Kadiri, and I am a procurement specialist with the DC Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Now, our program was mandated in 1985 by Congress to enable us to assist small businesses to gain access into the government market space for economic growth and development. Our program is federally funded. We're dual funded as um, is DCHA. Uh, on the federal side by Department of Defense, and we have a cooperative agreement with our local municipality, which is the Department of Small and Local Business Development. And so we are DC government employees housed in DSLBD. DSLBD has quite a number of programs within the agency. Some of the programs are commercial revitalization, business development, um, CBE compliance, CBE certifications, and I've heard quite a few businesses say that they're CBE certified, as well as innovation and equitable development. And so we're one of the many programs within DSLBD. And our program is to assist small businesses with, within the District of Columbia to gain competitive insight and to navigate the government contracting market space. Um, some of the things that we do is assist with the CBE certification. Um, there was someone on the phone that on this call that asked a question about that. And for all contracts that are over $250,000, there's a 35% set aside for CBEs. And so our office is the office where you would apply 
to get your uh, certification for the District of Columbia. And for the gentleman that uh, mentioned that he was MBE certified and asked if there was reciprocity, there is no reciprocity, but one of the best ways to gain access into another pipeline for contracting opportunities is by teaming or partnering. So those opportunities are definitely there within the District of Columbia. And we also assist with the DC supply schedule so that you can work with the Office of Contract and Procurement that um, I think they manage about 76 to 78 agencies within the District of Columbia. Our objective is to ensure that you know who buys what you sell, you know your competitors, you have a marketing strategy in place, and that you can actually have capacity and capability to perform work. And so we curtail the counseling to meet you where you are. As we've heard, there are many side, different size businesses on the phone, micro, small, macro, large. Um, we will help you with the counseling. It is at no cost to our small businesses within the District of Columbia that meet some very basic requirements. Um, if you can answer, is your business properly registered with DCRA, um, Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs, you're properly licensed, you have a business, completed business plan, you've been in existence and have done business for at least six months, you've done something in the government or a federal or commercial uh, space, you're properly registered uh, with a DUNS number, so if you can answer yes to all of those, and there are, um, it's not etched in stone. And so if you're not able to answer yes, contingent upon which one is the no, we would still be able to work with you um, so that you can understand how to do business in the District of Columbia, um, how to do business with the federal government. Uh, one of the things we pride ourselves in saying is that we're a bridge between the buyer and supplier. And so we know the needs of our agencies, we know the needs of our primes, and we also know the needs of our small businesses. And so we foster that relationship so that there can be a seamless transition and wins for the agency, as well as wins for our small businesses. Um, we give a lot of education and training workshops. We had a huge um, workshop, my colleague, Sheila Edmondson, who I believe is on the line, um, had a workshop for women-owned small um, business um, month, and um, that event had about um, over 500 registered, and I believe over 300 attended, where we were able to work with SBA, GSA, OCC, Department of Education, and a few others to educate them on opportunities for our women. So our workshops are at no cost for our businesses. It doesn't matter where you're located. You just need to register for the event. Um, and I'll ask Sheila to put our, um, that link in the chat room, East Center Direct, so that the businesses can see the events that we host. Um, one of the things on the agenda was the service contract. Last month, I gave a workshop on the Service Contract Act. Um, I also heard another thing on the agenda was emergency procurement. So we ensure our businesses know what it is, a great opportunity to um, have something small. And we always recommend for some of the businesses that I hear on the phone, you're small, start small. Um, get simplified acquisition. Uh, respond to RFQs, respond to RFIs, respond to sources sought notices. Um, know what they are. If you don't know what they are, uh, we'd be more than happy to educate you in that arena. We participate in a lot of joint outreaches as we're doing today um, and matchmaking sessions. I will remain on the line until close to answer any questions that may come about. Um, and I think I may have mentioned, but one of the most important things about our counseling, it is at no cost to our small businesses. Uh, for those in Maryland or other locations, there is a PTAC at University of Maryland. Um, counseling is always at no cost. Our training in the District of Columbia is also at no cost, but for the others, it may be at very, very low cost compared to com com competition and competitors. Um, we also assist with market research. 80% of what we do right now is market research related because um, we know COVID has impacted a lot. Nonetheless, the government is still open for business and our small businesses, some are thriving, um, some are pivoting. So we talk about strategies to pivot 
um, just to make sure you can sustain and stay afloat um, as we get back to some sort of uh, normalcy. Uh, for the woman that has the um, baking, that does the, the sweets, uh, my tooth was aching to try to taste something that you make. Um, nonetheless, we do have a Made in DC program within our agency, and I strongly recommend that you connect. Um, I, I'll be happy to stay on the line to give you that contact information. Um, as you said, you're trying to open a store, but in the meantime, there's a store that's open for our DC makers that have locally made products and baking would be one of those local products. So, and so that market research enables us to know how to contract what's going on in our contracting space. What's going on with our primes, our resource partners, uh, what's going on in industry so that we can train and educate our small businesses. And so I understand that um, there's a lack of time, but that's an abridged version of what we do. Um, we are again housed in the Department of Small and Local Business Development and our primary objective aligns with the mayors for economic growth and development of our small businesses. So we educate ourselves so that we can educate our clients. Don't do it alone. There's help out there for you. Um, if you're a veteran, we help you with that certification. If you're interested in hub zone, we help you with that. Uh, I'm sorry. The veteran is a verification. If you're hub zone, we help you with that certification. If you're interested in the DBE, we talk to you about that certification, which is different from the CBE certification. Um, the OCP supply schedule. If you're interested in federal schedules, GSA schedules. Um, 8A, woman owned, uh, whatever the case is, we're here to help you. Don't do it alone. A lot of times you don't have the money that you need because you're small. Um, come to the BCP tax. We're definitely here to help you. Um, and so I'll stay on the line again to answer any questions that may arise. And it's a very abridged version of what we do, but I wanted to kind of convey um, uh, nuts and bolts of our role and objective. So thank you for the opportunity, Mrs. Bond. Thank you so much, Ms. Kadiri. And you were going so fast and rolling. We didn't even get to your slide. You talked through it. <laughs> so, so the next slide is actually our contact information. So that is the team. Uh, Milton yeah. Goodman is our program manager. Sheila Edmondson is a colleague of mine, uh, very well astute uh, with relationship building in the industry by and large. Um, Earl King. He is our um, finance guy on the team, does a lot of QuickBooks for government contracting. Um, and I, I, I have a procurement and acquisition background in government contracting um, masters. And I've been with DCP TAC for six years. Um, Sheila has been there since the relaunch in 2013, as well as our program manager. Um, he's been a small business owner. For the most part, we all understand small business because we've owned it at some capacity. We have Ron Erahitha, who is the newest member of our team. I apologize. His information is not on that slide. And Michelle Harris is our intake coordinator who screens and vets our clients to ensure um, that they're properly positioned so that we can make the best use of everybody's time. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you for that presentation. And Absolutely. we appreciate all of that information. I wanted to make sure people knew that clearly your communication and your contact information is there. Again, this presentation is going to be uploaded on our website. So you'll be able to reach out to Ms. Kadiri. You'll be able to hold her to it because I know you said you said this. We want to be able to share. We can get some help. And obviously she has been listening because she's been hearing our public service announcements, all of our commercials and all of you resident business owners again, um, as well as other business owners who may need a little assistance. Again, as she said, don't try to do it yourself. They are there to help you and to assist. And again, as much as they can be able to put you on the right track so that when we do have solicitations you're ready for, then you can be able to respond and we can be able to make sure you can be awarded because you're ready and you put your best foot forward. So appreciate that so much, Ms. Kadiri. Thank you. And all Thank of you. the PTAC team uh, for coming here and for being able to present as far as the outreach. We do want to make sure, again, that information is shared. Um, and so that, again, we are trying to make sure we assist as much as possible. So thank you very much. Um, next slide, please. So again, uh, we're, we're winding up. 
Um, so again, what's next? Again, this is part of our local and small business outreach. If you have any procurement questions uh, with regard to any solicitations you see on our website or anything that you saw as far as a presentation, again, this is our email address, business at dchousing.org. I would encourage if you, again, whether you register at our bidders, um, on our bidders list uh, or not, that you visit our website often. Again, dchousing.org and click business and you take you right to our solicitations so you can be able to know and see exactly what we have to offer, what business we're doing, what opportunities we have available for you or any of your colleagues. Um, again, with regard to business opportunities that we're hosting at the Housing Authority. Next slide, please. All right, that is the end of our formal presentation as far as this is concerned for our vendors opportunity expo. Thank you all so much. Um, we would ask for anyone that does still have any questions wants to hear from or speak to any of our staff or to any of our business owners, please stay on the line. You can be able to ask your questions in turn. We will take your questions. And again, um, as Ms. Kadiri said, she's staying as well as again, our senior staff so we can be able to make sure that Folks can be able to respond to you, ask any questions, answer them as much as we can, because again, we're working together as much as again, we can be able to let you know what we have available. We want to be able to hear about you and be able to work with you. So thank you all so very much for participating, for presenting, for being here. And again, we'd like to leave it open for anyone who would like to have any questions, please. Hi, this is Mike again from USF Red Inspections. Yes. Yes. I want to tell you what the intent is for me doing business with DC. Infrared inspections is a highly technical field. And what I hope to gain by doing business with DC is to actually employ uh, young, inspiring people who want to learn that technical field. Uh, we also, well, what I also want to do is create a training uh, situation where we can actually certify thermographers so that DC can have its own infrared division. Uh, I don't think, uh, from what I can see in infrared, that DC knows what the full impact of infrared can be during construction of new buildings and the maintenance of older buildings, how infrared can save uh, the city money. Uh, do you have any ideas of how I can implement that? Well, again, as you suggested before, Mr. Wiggs, like I recommended to you again, if because you don't think and you feel like we're not uh, informed again, we're not the district. We're the district of Columbia housing authority. So separate from the district again, we, our mission is with regard to again, our low income and very low income residents as far as public housing um, as well as our voucher program. And so again, we do have the opportunity for services. If, in fact, again, you want to be able to submit some information with regard to your services or submit an unsolicited proposal, you can do so at that business at dchousing.org website where you can be, I mean, email address where you can be able to share with us more information about what you do and about the technology. And so in that way, then we can be able to reach out to you once we are more informed as we want to share with us the information so we can be able to respond to you. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. you're welcome. I had a question um, for Mr. Wiggs. Um, like the young lady said before, Vanessa, and also the gentleman asked in the very beginning, wanted to make sure I understood under my CVE what I could do as I partnered with Dell Technologies, Microsoft, Amazon, different things like that to offer services to the district for software and hardware. For Mr. Wiggs, I'm also involved with the other agencies in the District of Columbia, as Ms. Bonds is explaining that housing is separate. I would love to work with you. We have a group of young ladies, um, and it will be young men, but for young ladies right now is my passion in the STEM area of infrared cameras, but ironically drone piloting. So they will be the first African American women to not only be drone pilots, um, but also be certified from the FAA. So I'm wanting to hear more because this puts women in the ability to deal with construction. I've also partnered with another company, you may have heard it, Autodesk, back in 2018 to help with some of the construction work 
uh, building, uh, as we talked about construction here in the district that helps you look at construction in a 3D manner, but for stakeholders, for the community, for everyone at large that would be involved in it. And it's called, um, <clears throat> Autodesk has a technology called BIM, Building Information Modeling. And some of the, the two gentlemen that were here earlier talking about construction and the different things that they're working on in the phases. And Mr. Uh, Butler, you all would be great components, um, but definitely Mr. Wiggs, if you could contact me and put your information down below, uh, I would like to look at partnering to you because I'm at a unique table that some people can't you know, get into as I've been invited, as I introduced this back in 2018 before the pandemic, of, of new opportunities in STEM. And your infrared is definitely in STEM. Um, so there's a lot of programs that we can partner with that may not talk to each other, but we can talk to each other for the greater good, talk to each other so that we can talk to housing, those type of things. So I would love to talk to you, sir. Um, I'm excited. My company is Lightweight Technologies. Uh, we, want, we have partnered with different avenues to bring on digitizing DC, like I said, back in 2018, um, but it just can cover so many different arrays of opportunities. I like yourself or am building a school. Um, so we definitely, I would definitely like to have the opportunity to talk to you and we could definitely um, chit chat about opportunities. And the other gentleman that is in Maryland and is concerned, I think he has the cameras I've also dealt with partnering with a company that the libraries in DC needed a while back, but you know, we only here can, you know, we're being informed about the housing, but there's so many more opportunities. And I do want a caramel cake from the lady. That I did send an information in the chat, but yes, <laughs> and it's lunchtime, but definitely Mr. Wiggs, uh, Mr. Butler, anyone else who's doing something construction it's kind of you name it let's look at building another platform so that we can bridge the gap but thank you so much to everyone here and anybody again my name is sherry hooks send me your company's information i don't care what it is that you do i like to wear clothes i like the when i when we build houses we need uh people that can you know decorate them and design them so let's work together everybody and thank you so much for your time I want to piggyback off of Mr. Butler and Ms. Hooks and Mr. Wiggs. My, one of my certifications under FEMA is Building for Earthquakes of Tomorrow. Um, also, I have 26 certifications, 17 under FEMA and nine under CERT, which stands for Community Emergency Response Team. Um, and they range from emergency planning and preparedness to um, civil rights and FEMA community um, organization, the NIMS, the National um, Incident Management Systems, which is also under FEMA. If you all go to my facebook.com slash high alert prep and look under my photos, you can see I've scanned all of my my FEMA certification and my miscellaneous certifications. You can all, you can see all of my certifications and I just got an honorary certificate from my church. I just became a, I, I earned an honorary certificate in metaphysics. So I am now a doctor of metaphysics. Miss Hyde. So um, I, I really want to thank you. I, I want to connect with everybody on being prepared. As the climate, you all know that Texas just went through a cold snap, a really deep freeze, and they were not prepared. So a lot of the families, when they came back to their homes, had, you know, pipe bursting issues. They had, you know, mold issues because of that. So they did not have food stored. They did not have supplies stored. They did not have anything ready. And as our climate continues to change, storms are gonna get worse. Flooding in DC will continue to get worse. 
which causes sewage backups, which causes a lot more, you know, viral outbreaks, bacterial outbreaks, fungal outbreaks, and we have to be prepared for them. So when COVID hit and the whole entire world shut down, guess what happened? Our ozone had a chance to correct itself. And this is why we're having the, the atmosphere that we're having, the cold, the deep freezes that we're having. So I encourage everybody to get with me to start preparing because the storms are only gonna get worse. The, wor the more that we damage our planet, the worse it's gonna get. And I encourage everybody to start watching a documentary called Kiss the Ground. It's gonna teach you all how to re refurbish and replenish the ground that we walk on. It's called Kiss the Ground. All right, so I'm not trying to tell everybody to go vegan, but we need to eat more vegetables. We really do. We consume so much meat that the meat production is actually, the methane in the air is actually destroying the ozone layer. And a lot of that, what we need to do to be prepared is start like vacuum packing and freeze drying a lot of the stuff we need to go in our go bags. You know, we never know when we're gonna have to split and get out of DC. We're in the nation's capital, which is a place of lawmaking, which is a place that will get hit first. And because of the gentrification, a lot of our fallout shelters, bomb shelters, They've been destroyed. So Ms. Hyde, think Ms. Hyde, about I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt because yeah. you're sharing a lot of good information. Thank you so much. Because again, part of what this is about is definitely networking because we want for all of you as business owners to be able to share what you do the way Ms. Hooks has, the way again, Mr. Butler. Um, again, everyone has been able to share um, the opportunities that they can present as well as again, the networking to be able to connect and the contract, subcontract, work together. And so again, I would encourage, um, obviously all of you that are resident business owners that presented, all of your information is already in the presentation. For anyone else, please do in the chat, please include your information. Again, if you already registered uh, with us as far as the program was concerned, we will have your information. Um, again, we have it as far as again, you joining um, this WebEx so that we can be able to share that too if you like with anyone who is again part of and has presented here today because again we want to be able to do as much as we can to network and i know again it's getting we getting hungry it's getting towards the 12 o'clock hour and all we see is miss nelson over there cooking and getting ready for somebody else's order so we want to make sure again <laughs> you have her information and that we can be able to prepare that accordingly so that we are ready um but i just wanted to uh, extend again to anyone else who may have any questions, any concerns, especially of again, Ms. Kadiri, that's here to be able to make sure again, she can respond um, to again, any questions or any additional services. You may have already registered with DCRA, but there may be some things that you realize you're not getting a shot at, or you're not getting an opportunity, or how can I be able to submit a better proposal? They are there obviously to be able to assist you all with that and work as much as possible. So I wanna be able to make sure everyone takes advantage of the opportunities. Their information is there too, so you can be able to reach out to them at your leisure as well though. So I have a quick comment um, since you mentioned my name. Uh, like sure. Matthias <laughs> has a lot of great information that she's sharing as does everyone else on the line. And my first, the first thing that comes to my mind is do you have a capability statement? Do you have something that showcases your business resume? Um, and um, so that's actually a question. Um, if you don't, I really strongly recommend that you create a capability statement that highlights your core competencies, your differentiators, your past performance, um, your contact information, your NACE codes, your NIGP codes, your vehicles that you have. If you um, accept, um, if you have, 
what is it, a merchant's account if you accept credit cards, because you can talk, but a lot of times people won't remember what you say. But if you have that capability statement that showcases um, your wares and your service offerings, it goes a lot of, a long way. Because if I have a contracting officer looking for a requirement, and we do get that, a lot of times contracting officers primes, they'll send us a requirement and they want us to assist them with finding a match. The first thing I want to see is your capability statement. If you don't have it, you don't get an opportunity. Very good advice, Ms. Kadiri. Thank you. I'd like to know too, as far as our uh, solicitations, uh, would you all be a connect or have someone who can be able to receive our procurements that we send out to be able to help match folks up and maybe different uh, contractors that may not be CBEs or registered or those section three businesses who are supposed to be registered with DACD. We'd like to, if we could be able to connect with you all to send you our procurement. So if you do know of other contractors that could be able to do outreach, if there's an opportunity for that. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's one of my main reasons why I'm here is to like the, to bridge that gap and to let you all know what we do as well. We're fulfilling some requirements right now for Department of Justice that reached, reached out to us yesterday for a need that they had an immediate need. So uh, that's absolutely one of the things that we do. And you can send it to me and when I respond, I'll send you the team information so that, you know, we all can be on the same page. We'd be more than happy to assist with any requirements that you have. It's a win for the city. It's a win for our small businesses as well. And it keeps everything economically in-house for growth and development. Excellent, thank you. Thank you so absolutely. much. Any other questions for any of our panel? Any questions for yeah, any of I our have a the business for Vanessa? Um, yeah, I want Vanessa to call me so she can give me that extra um, information. Because like when I be having bigger orders and stuff like that, I work out this small stove. And someone had told me that people who bake in and need to bake a lot, they have some like some place in DC that people can go and bake. They provide you the stove. But if Vanessa can just help me or give me some information or, or direct me, that would actually be good because it would help me with my bigger orders that I have. So I'm posting my information uh, in the chat room right now. Okay. Okay. And Ms. Kadiri's information is part of this, uh, again, program, as well as oh, your that's right, it is. So both of them are going to be <laughs> uploaded, so you'll be able to, in case she didn't write it down that fast, and then both of your information, as well as everyone else's, is part of, again, this presentation is going to be uploaded to our website. So you'll definitely be able to connect, be able to reach out to Ms. Kadiri and her team, um, again, so that you all can be able to find that, that place where you can be able to do that, as well as, I'm sure Ms. Kadiri can share with you grants, um, obviously that you could be able to hopefully apply for as far as being able to purchase um, uh, something else. And again, as far as you're working, like she said, your small business, embrace that, continue to work on that so you can firm that up so that again, you can start building. Right, so within our agency, um, within DSLBD, uh, we actually offer the micro grant that, um, well, the dream grant, excuse me, that comes out every now and again for Ward 7 and Ward 8 residents. Um, then there are some other opportunities that our agency has, and we do put them out to our certified business enterprises. And so one of the things that we discuss is that certification. What is the benefit of having that certification? How can it help you have another pipeline of opportunities as well as the DC supply schedule? What is the benefit? Because not every vehicle that's out there um, is the best for you. That's why you have to know who buys what you sell. What's the best vehicle for you? Be strategic in your marketing strategy so that you can grow your business. So absolutely reach out to us. Um, as long as you meet our requirements, we're here to assist you. And even if you don't, we'll give you the information that you need so that it points you in the right direction so that you can, um, a lot of times business owners, they, one of the things that we heard on our, her story um, that, that my colleague Sheila did is that a lot of times our business owners, they work on their business, not in, they work in their business, not on their business. So yeah, we know that you all know how to do the work, you're subject matter experts, but you also have to work on your business so that you can propel it from one level to the next. So we're here to help you, absolutely here to help you. I'm very happy to be a part of this to learn that um, what I hear is that some of you all need our help. <laughs> uh, we're DC government employees, so we have nothing to take from you. <laughs> Ms. Lori um, or Ms. Vanessa, is there a directory for 
other small businesses for people who did not attend this particular expo that we can connect with? When you say a directory, yeah, of, clarify. Not, yeah, like not. um, there may be other business owners, small black women owned business owners that we that may have services that we may want to connect with. Um, mm -hmm. may, even men, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we I may, think you're talking about may, teaming partners trying to get in touch yes. with other businesses, and that's that's again one of the things that I said initially. That's relationship building, right? And so right. on this platform, I'm not sure how many are um, in attendance, but you have contact information. You've heard some people speak. And so when you reach out, you have to be specific. Even on LinkedIn, you can reach out to them, but don't just try to connect with them. I met you at this event and you spoke on this. Um, it was really insightful and it gave me a new perspective on my business. I'd like to connect with you. Always have a reason so that you're strategic. I've used that word a few times. And so now you have a connection. You follow that person. Um, where they're buying, you can buy. Where they're shopping, you can shop. Where they're selling, you can sell. And so it's it's knowing your competitors, knowing who buys what you sell. But there are places on the federal side of the house. I just don't want to give too much information that just won't be beneficial. But on the federal side of the house, there's a small business dynamic search. And that's a repository of subcontractors, small businesses that are looking for each other, as well as agencies looking for you. Um, you can find the same thing through OCP by doing your market research. So it's just a matter of streamlining the process, staying within your NIGP code or your NACE code and looking for other like minded businesses that do what you do. Um, it's like it's like marriage. You don't accept these days is reality TV. We know it's all crazy, but you just don't marry someone that you meet today. You've got to date them. You've got to follow them. You've got to pay attention to what they do so that when you team with that person, it's a relationship and it's not a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So, so they are there. And as you reach out to us, we have a repository as well. And based upon your relationship and your behaviors, um, at times we try to do a warm intro and we tell you, we do the intro. It's up to you to build a relationship. Um, so it's not just for me though. It's like, if somebody, okay, for instance, I just had a resident to ask me yesterday if I knew of someone who knows a babysitter because they have a daughter who who got called into work at the last minute. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And they need a babysitter. And I'm like, well, I don't know anybody, you know, so let me ask around. You see what I'm saying? I do. Um, so our focus, I will be direct. Our focus is the government contracting. Um, so I, I understand that's an example. And my first recommend recommendation would be to get connected in your ward. Um, join the listserv in your ward so you can get your name in the community. You can get a listing of what's going on in the community events. Um, I forgot, like, like they put out the value pack. Um, I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a listing of all the services, tree cutters, babysitters, cleaners um, in your community. I would definitely recommend that you get on a listserv within your ward so that you can be more connected and know who um, has services and is engaged in your local area. Thank you. Any other questions? Anything else for? Ms. Kadiri, or for any of the other panelists or any other DCHA staff that spoke today? I'm just waiting for I had one for Ms. Kadiri. Is someone else talking? I'm sorry. No, all I was just saying, I'm just waiting on people to call in for their cake order, but you go ahead, um, Ms. Kadiri. <laughs> uh, but Ms., Ms. Nelson, did you put your number in the chat or can you shout it out right yeah. quick? I'm as two, as 240. Six six zero nineteen forty four. Okay, I'm I'm relationship building, Miss Kadiri. I have a question <laughs> for you. <laughs> but through COVID 2018, I went through a lot of what different people are talking about, whether they're just starting now or frustrations of trying to do a connection with everybody and what they do. So, you know, thank you for reiterating. I was busy chatting to people, send me your information so that I could connect. But I had a quick question with you. I'm a member of the local chamber of commerce. My I'm in ward five under McDuffie 
And I'm just, I'm connecting, but I find myself um, fulfilling a job that wasn't being done. And saying that, I'm talking about all the benefits for small business that we have going on right now, PPPs, uh, and we also have the EDIL. And those things have been changing since day one. Um, so I'm finding myself supporting the small business level of folks, you know, might have one or none employees, like a young lady, she's making her cakes, it's just her, just things like that where they qualify. Knowing about unemployment, should I file versus doing a PPP until I get my PPP? So to wrap that up, um, Ms. Kadiri, I'm asking, do you know of any others? I've sat in panels with SBA because I'm also from Southern regions, Texas, Florida. So I know all about the hurricane, but we, we get better when we know better. So do you know if the DSLBD has had any events where they're helping individuals with um, small business obtaining those if they need those services and support grants and loans? Um, yeah, our agency um, just oh. did that. I don't remember when, I don't know if she was remember on the line. I remember if it was DSLBD. Um, okay. Yeah, it's DSLBD and then there's yeah. the um, DIMPED. DIMPED also does it and, you know, we work um, under DIMPED as well. So between DIMPED and DSLBD, we've put out quite a bit um, during the pandemic. Very for, sometimes it's for very specific wards um, and sometimes it's for DC residents. But uh, again, I would get on our website, DSLBD. I was trying to post in the chat room. I don't know why I couldn't. But um, DSLBD.DC.gov and just get on our mailing list. Get on DIMPED's mailing list. Um, the, the more mail, get on DGS's mailing list, get on DCHA's mailing list. You've got nothing to lose by getting on these mailing lists. And when you get inundated with the emails, you do have to read them. That's what, that's right. what market research is. You've got to weed out. Um, and it, it's going to take 10 no's before you get a yes, but you will get it if you're consistent and you will build the right relationship so that you can foster a win. A win isn't just winning a contract. Sometimes a win is getting the PPP. You know, sometimes you know, the win sometimes is winning, winning a pitch winning competition. A pitch competition. So it just depends, so it just on, depends on what the on, need is. On what the need is. Okay, great. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've had a contract with DGS prior to, and I learned a lot of things from the director because I served under a contract position um, for uh, Director Greg Gillis under DGS. So that enlightened me to, like you said, just paying attention, understanding the different things. Um, being a partner with DSLBD, in fact, of getting the green book, making sure I go through go. and see all the agencies, like you said, get on all the mail lists. So I am, it's almost like too much information, but you know, you never can have too much. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, all of you for participating, coming to again, hear the opportunities for the District of Columbia Housing Authorities Vendor Contracting Expo. We again welcome all of you who have shared so much about yourselves, your businesses, the things that you need that you're working on. We definitely appreciate it hearing from you all. We want to continue to be able to do such. Um, again, please, I encourage you to visit our website. Again, register as a bidder so we can be able to reach out to you. Like I said, again, this presentation has been recorded. It is also going to be uploaded to our website. So if there's any other contact information from the panel for information, that'll be there. And worst case scenario, you can always be able to email directly to business at dchousing.org. That is the email address of the procurement office so that we can be able to respond to any questions or concerns you have there. And that's also part of our presentation. So again, I'd like to say thank you to all of you. Thank you to the folks um, that presented from the housing authority, um, as well as our executive director, Mr. Garrett, and our chairman of the board, Mr. Neil Albert. So. Um, hopefully everyone can enjoy the rest of the day. Ms. Kadiri is already outside getting some sunshine. <laughs> yeah. So again, hopefully everyone will have a beautiful day and thank you all so much for participating. All right. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to doing this.